Uh, good evening. I think it's morning over there in uh, South Africa. I greet you in the wonderful, precious name of Jesus, Pastor Didi, and uh, Church Without Walls. And uh, I just uh, come to you in this powerful name, this name that is above every other name. And I thank God this name is also above this uh, crisis that we're going through, this coronavirus crisis and COVID-19. And you've all heard about it in the media and uh, the whole world has been turned upside down. It's interesting, Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 33, he said, In this world, you will have trouble. Now, I've never seen a Christian put that scripture on their fridge, but it's in the word of God. But Jesus also promised, he said, Be of good cheer, for I've overcome this world. And if you are in Christ, then you will overcome and you have overcome. I want to encourage you, the living church, you have the living God inside of you. You know, don't listen to these erroneous doctrines that uh, always seem to come up when there's a tsunami, when there's a, an earthquake, when there's floods. Whenever there's some kind of a natural disaster, oh my goodness, are the prophets of doom out there. And uh, just as they are there in your country, they are over here in Australia. We've heard all kinds of absolute ludicrous uh, blasphemies against the name of our beautiful God. You see, Jesus, he came to reveal just who God is. The scripture says that he was in the bosom of the Father. He was in El Shaddai. And he came, and he came to manifest the glory of God. So we behold the face of God through the life of Jesus. And anything else or outside of that is a total misconception or a lie. Doesn't matter how sincere people are, I want you to know... If we veer from the truth of who Jesus is and who he manifested God to be, then we are in error and we have not rightly divided the word of truth. Many years ago, my father had fallen under great uh, financial pressure due to floods. And when he went to the insurance company in this very country, they turned around and they said, no, it was an act of God. So we cannot pay you out. And so many people have believed this lie. That have said, uh, you know, as the insurance companies, where did they get it from? They really got it from uh, well-meaning people in the church who have the misconstrued or, or a bad image of who God is. I want you to know, if we really want to know what are the acts of God. Even many have said this coronavirus is an act of God. It's a judgment of God against mankind. I want you to know that is a lie. Because the Bible says very clearly in the book of Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power and who went about doing good. I want you to know the emphasis was on doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. In 1 John chapter 3 verse 8, it backs it up and it says that Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus clearly said in John chapter 10 verse 10 that the thief cometh not but to steal, but to kill and to destroy. But I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. Jesus, my friend, loves you. He loves you so much. That he gave up his life for you. And he said, I did not come into this world to condemn this world. But I came that this world might be saved. I want you to know Jesus is a savior. He is not a destroyer. He is not both destroyer and blesser. He is not a schizophrenic God. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, is the same yesterday, today and forever. I cannot but tell you how excited I am when I read the scriptures and I see the goodness of God. You see, for it is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance or a radical change of mind. I want you to know that God doesn't just love you. He's in love with you. Not only is he in love with you, he likes you. In fact, the Bible says in the Psalms that he bends down to hear you. I love that because one day the, the disciples were, were, were busy with, uh, with some of the mothers who, who wanted to bring their children to Jesus to bless them. And, 
And they said, no, 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 don't trouble the master. He's really busy with spiritual business. And Jesus, you have the picture of him rebuking the disciples and saying, you do not know what you're talking of. For of this is what the kingdom is all about. And Jesus bows down, he bends down. And he says to the little children, suffer not the little children, but to come unto me. For this is what the kingdom is all about. The father opening his arms. His unconditional, relentless love for you welcomes you. He's not against us. He's not against the world. I want you to know clearly, God is in love with the world. He loves the world. Otherwise, he would not have given his only begotten son to die for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. No, my friend, this disease, this sickness is not a judgment from God. It is not from God. God is for us, the scripture says, and he's not against us. I want you to know very clearly in the book of John, chapter 12 and verse 31, Jesus talking in context about judgment. He says these words in this. He said, now is the judgment of this world. And if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And, and, and in scripture, it says in, in the Bible, it says all peoples. But I want you to know that that's written in italics. So it was never, ever meant to be there. John 12 verse 31, in the context he's talking about is the judgment that he would take upon himself when he went to the cross for you and me. For he who knew no sin, he became the sin of the world. I want you to know when Jesus hung on that cross, for three hours of darkness came upon this world, the scripture says. Each hour represents an age, time past, time present, and even time future. While we were yet sinners, the Bible says in Romans 5, it said, God demonstrated, he proved his love for us by dying on the cross for us. He took and paid the penalty for our sin. He came on account of our sin debt, a debt which you and I could never ever pay, and he paid it in full. In Isaiah chapter 61, he talks very favorably of a getting double. And this word double comes from a very ancient tradition. And this word double in the time set that the Bible was written was well known amongst the people. You see, if you got into debt in those days, you could wait for the year of Jubilee, which only came around every 50 years. I want you to know Christ is our Jubilee. Thank God. Or else you could sell yourself into slavery. Thank God Jesus came to redeem us from being an enslavement or enslaved to sin and to this world system. Or else you could wait for a rich trader to pay the double. What does that mean? Or what would happen if you were in debt? You would write down all the people that you were indebted to and the amounts that you were indebted to. And you would write it on a goat skin and you would put it or nail it on a tree on the main road hoping that somebody would have mercy, somebody would have compassion and pay the double. And I have in my hand here a piece of flash paper to demonstrate this. I want you to know that... Uh, Every one of your sins were written upon Jesus Christ. Every one of your sins, past, present, and future. When he put it in the, uh, when you would write your sins on, on that piece of paper, everybody could see who you were indebted to. Everybody knew how much money you owed. And this seems ludicrous, but you would do it in faith that somebody, somebody would have compassion. Somebody would reach out. And say, what's that money to you is not money to me. And a rich trader or ruler would take that and he would double it over. As Isaiah 61 says that Jesus has paid our double when he went to that cross. I want you to know every one of your sins were paid for. The judgment of God was poured out upon Jesus Christ. The wrath of God against our sin or on the sin of the whole world. That means everybody that has ever lived that is living and that is going to live. He's already paid your penalty. And when Jesus said it's finished, I want you to see physically what happens. Now this is not just a little magic piece of paper. I want you to see all of your sins were written upon Jesus. And when he took it, the fire or the wrath of God was laid out upon Jesus. And I want you to see what happens to your sin right now. 
It's gone completely. That's quite incredible. Now, that's not, I just want you to know that that's just a piece of flash paper. But I've done that to demonstrate to you that there are absolutely no ashes from that piece of paper. Nothing exists. When Jesus cried out from the cross, it is finished. I want you to know it was finished. Completely finished. All of your sins and the sins of the world were obliterated through the power of the blood sacrifice of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. The one who crushed the head of Satan. Hallelujah. You and I were buried with Christ in, into his death. And then we were buried into the tomb. But on the third day we rose again with a newness of life. Oh, hallelujah. The scripture says when Jesus said it's finished and he died on that cross, there was a great earthquake. And when that earthquake took place, the curtain temple that separated the Holy of Holies from the most holy place was torn from top to bottom, 40 centimeters thick. Not so that you and I could get access to God, but I believe rather it was God who tore that curtain and said the penalty has been paid. And I can now, the middle wall of division is gone. And I'm looking for somebody whose heart is open that I can come and live inside of them. I thank God, church, when you said yes to Jesus and you invited him into your life. My friend, you came in the sh or the, under the shadow of the Almighty and the Almighty God, the living God, the God that Jesus came to reveal, the good God who was moved with compassion and healed the multitudes. That same Jesus who didn't come to condemn came and lived inside of you and me. And the scripture says we have been regenerated. Our DNA was changed. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become brand new. I thank God nearly 30 years ago I made that decision, and Jesus came into my life. What a happy day that was. My sins were washed, and I became brand new. His joy, His peace, His power, His unconditional love came in into my heart praise be to God and into your heart and I want you to know people you have got nothing to fear for greater is he who is in you and he who is in me than he that is in the world and the same Jesus who was raised by the Holy Spirit. That same Holy Spirit came and lived inside of you, child of God. You are not an orphan. You are not alone. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will never, never, never leave you. Hallelujah. The same God who bends down in absolute love. His love is relentless for you. His love is furious. His love is all powerful. And that love, I want you to know, is your protection. No weapon formed against you can or ever will prosper. Whatever virus comes against you, it's like an arrow by night. It will be obliterated. For God is a shield about you and me. He is our glory. He is the lifter of our heads. Not only is God in our hearts, He's upon us. He surrounds us. He has hedged us in from all sides. Sickness cannot and will not exist inside of you. For the very Zoe, the life of God, is inside of you. The Bible says, he who has the Son of God, has the very life of God. Oh, my friend, thank God. God is not angry with us anymore. And I've got good news for you. In the book of Job, it says that Satan... You know, when God asked him, what are you doing? He went into the throne of God with the other angels. And he said, where have you been? He said, I've been running to and fro through the earth. You know that Satan had access into the throne room of God. And he came to accuse with the laws of God. But I want you to know in the book of Revelations chapter 12. I want to actually read this to you quickly. Revelations chapter 12. Bear with me. Let me find the scripture for you because it's so powerful. It tells us very clearly what has happened when Jesus said it's finished on the cross and the judgment was paid for our sins. In Revelations chapter 12, forgive me, I know my brilliant is answered. 
because my scriptures getting a little bit smaller or maybe my eyes are going. But I thank God they're getting redeemed every day. And I can still see this beautiful scripture, this word of God. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, that's Satan, who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to their lives to the death. Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? Isn't that amazing news? That Satan has been cast out of the throne room of heaven. And the one who is seated at the right hand of the Father is Jesus. And he's not accusing you. He's not out there to get you. Satan has been cast out forever. And all you have to do is plead this unadulterated, holy, precious blood of Jesus over your body, over your mind, over your family. The scripture is clear. It says that he watches over our going out and our coming in. He never slumbers and he never sleeps. And he guards over you jealously. For the Lord is your shepherd. And that word shepherd in the Hebrew is one of the most beautiful words because it literally means in Hebrew, my best friend. That Jesus is your best friend. He knows everything about you. He knows about every skeleton in your closet. And yet he says, I love you. Not as you should be, but I love you just the way you are. Not the way others think you should be. I love you just the way you are. God is in love with you. That's why the scripture keeps on calling you beloved. And that's why it is so important that we keep ourselves in the love of God. This furious love of God. Beloved, I want you to know that we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I want to give you this message to strengthen your spiritual immune system. Because I tell you what fear is opposite to love. Anything that is of fear or fear mongering is from the evil one. Because the Bible says God is love and perfect love casts out all fear. You see, there's no shadow of turning with God. The scripture is very clear. God is not in a good mood or in a bad mood sometimes. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. The Bible says in 1 John 4 verse 7 that God is love. It's not what he does or what he has. It's who he is. So when we come into contact with the living God, we come into contact with absolute, unconditional, unadulterated, pure love. Perfect love. God loves you perfectly. He's in love with you. And that love just drives fear out of your heart. Fear, my friend, will diminish your immune system. Fear will strip away. The thing that you fear will come upon you. Or you open the door to allow these symptoms to come into your life. I want you to know you don't have to fear. Because we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And what that means clearly, and I'll give you a short scripture. And I want to share another scripture with you. And then I'm going to say goodbye. But, you know, in the Old Testament, or in the times of the biblical times, when you were traveling through a desert and you were tired and had no water and you had nowhere to sleep and you saw a caravan or a tent, all you had to do was to place your hand on the rope of that tent. And the owner in that tent, he was bound through custom. It didn't matter who you were, but he would open his doors. Even if he didn't eat, he was bound to give you a meal and to give you a place to sleep. I want you to know, be still and know that God is love. That God is in love with you. That God cares about you. And come and abide for one evening. Come and abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Come under the wings of God. I want you to know as a, as a mother hen protects her little chickens, how much more does your father want to protect you at this time? Put you under his wings and whisper sweet, beautiful things into your ears and says to you, come away, my beloved. Come away, my beloved. Come with me. This is just a, you know, I'm not in a studio now, excuse my little dog barking, but I believe she's excited about God. And we're not going to fear the devil because fear is just the worship of, of a false God. 
Don't let anxiety grip your heart. Don't use your God-given imagination to keep on saying, what if, what if, what if? What if, what if? I want you to know there is a certainty with God. God is for you and not against you. He is a shield about you. He's not judging this world. He's not putting this. He doesn't want to put you down. Hallelujah. Look what it says with me in Isaiah chapter 54. I'll read it to you quickly in Isaiah 54. I've got so much to share with you. And perhaps we'll do one or two more of these little videos for you, Pastor Didi. I just love you and I love your church and I love what you're doing in that place. It's just beautiful. In Isaiah chapter 54. Bear with me as I find the scripture for you quickly. Isaiah chapter 54. Look what it says. After Jesus had died, after he is resurrected, look what the scripture says. This is the promise of God to you. It says, For this is like the waters of Noah to me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah would no longer cover the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be angry with you nor rebuke you. For the mountain shall depart... And the heels be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has mercy upon you. God is so in love with you and loves you, and he's not against you. I just want you to know that today, my friends. His love is relentless. It's pursuing you. It's a pursuing love. It's the agape love. It's the unconditional love. The love that is always reaching out to you. He's bending down and he's listening to your prayers today. Do not fear. In fact, the Bible says 365 times, do not fear. You know, God doesn't want you to fear. When the disciples were locked in a room and Jesus came and stood in the midst of them, the first words after his resurrection was, fear not. I want you to know that Jesus is in your boat. It doesn't matter in this time of uncertainty what's going to happen. I don't care what's going to happen. I know that Jesus is in your boat and he will calm the storms of your life. Your boat, your life can never sink because the resurrection and the life is inside of you. And I thank God the same Jesus has never lost the recipe for manna. This God who is greater than any symptoms, he's greater than any circumstances. He has overcome this world. And if you are in him, praise God. You have overcome this world. In fact, the Bible says that the whole of creation is crying out for the revelation of God's sons. The problem is that we are sons with amnesia. We've forgotten who we are. God is not up there somewhere. God is an ever-present God in the time of trouble. He's with you. He's in you. He surrounds you. He's upon you. Ramotu shakalamatele botorabakayende. I encourage you, keep yourself in the love of God, looking for His tender mercies. Encourage yourself, build yourself up, praying in your most holy faith. God is for us, not against us. I hope this has helped you. I just want to tell you that I love you, Pastor Didi, and Church Without Walls. I long to be with you at times, and, and I just keep you in my prayers continuously. God bless every single one of you, and I mean that sincerely from the bottom of my heart. Fear not, God is for you, and He's a healer. He's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Moved with compassion. He looks upon you. He is moved from deep within. And he says, I am willing to be healed. Touch the hem of his garment. Let his blood cleanse you. Let his word wash you. Jesus said you are clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Do not be contaminated by the fears of this world. Take Psalm 91, read it over your life continuously, abide under the shadow of the Almighty, especially at this time and every day of your life. He's with you, He will never leave you, He will never forsake you. God bless you. Amen.